got your Bibles? Uh, yeah, that man corner over there. Always a clown, ain't he? We could start a circus. We got plenty of clowns, that's for sure. Uh, it's always an honor to be with y'all, and Stu got in touch with me yesterday and asked, and uh, uh, it's humbling to be up here. I want y'all to know that. I don't take this lightly, and uh, I see so many other people that could do seem like a better job than me, but, uh, uh, you know, I've always said, Lord, if you open the door, i got to take it, so, uh, I, but anyway, I, it's a, it is humbling for me to stand up here, it's a little, a little different, but uh, if you got your Bibles, turn to 1 Peter 3, <coughs> 1 Peter 3, and we'll start at verse 13. I want to talk a little bit about having faith that's ready, ready for anything. Um, we all face difficulties, sufferings. Um, you know, what makes a difference is how we handle these situations a lot of times. Um, you know, you guys, uh, some of the younger people, I think, think, you know, everything's going to go just like you planned, and uh, as you get older and life beats you up, it, it doesn't quite work out that way a lot of times. And, um, you know, let's face it, most of the time if we have struggles and difficulties, a lot of times we got to look in the mirror. It's because I'm the one that caused it, you know. But there is times, there is times when we, it's brought on us that we really, uh, it's not our fault. And I think those times are probably a little bit tougher. I know they are for me because i got to be real, you know. A lot of times I get myself in messes. But, uh, you know, and we all know that it's a sin problem. It, the whole thing is sin. But sin can creep in, and we're actually, you know, pretty much we didn't ask for that. So, uh, we got to keep Christ at the center of our lives, um, guys, no matter what the circumstances are. And uh, I'm going to read here where Peter is talking to the Christians at uh, Asia Minor. That's today's Turkey, modern-day Turkey. They was getting persecuted really bad, and it was by local people for the, because they were believers. Now, when we think about Peter, guys, as you're reading this, always remember, you know, to me it's easy to overlook. Peter, Peter was a disciple of Jesus. He was with him. He was with him in his earthly ministry. He seen him. He seen the resurrection. And I love Peter in the first, uh, in the first part of Acts, how Peter actually started the church and his boldness and getting arrested and he wasn't backing up and really all of the all the deacon I mean all the disciples did that you know I'm, I'm a firm believer guys that uh, that's one sign that there was a true resurrection I believe it anyway but uh, the deacons they turned in deacons the disciples uh, the disciples they turned into animals you know, after that. And so, uh, <clears throat> I tell you what, guys, uh, we think all of them but one was martyred, but uh, I wouldn't die for a, for a lie, but I, I might die for the truth, but I sure wouldn't die for a lie. So, but with that being said, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. <clears throat> and who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But if, but and if you suffer for righteous sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. 16. Having a good conscience that where, whereas they speak evil of you as as of evildoers, they may be ashamed and falsely accuse your good conversion in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. In verse 18, for 
Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Uh, in verse 13 here, in, going back now, looking at verse by verse, and who is he that will harm you if you be followers of which is good? The followers here is a little different word. It means, in the Greek, it means zealous. Followers means they was, they, you know, they was very devout, very, very strong followers of Christ here. And, you know, he says, who will harm you if you be followers of which is good? Uh, again, guys, I, I ain't telling y'all nothing tonight. A lot of this stuff is, is, I hope you know, but it's always good to hear the basics and, and work on the basics. But uh, then 14, he says, But, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Now, in 14, the word happy here is different in the Greek from what we think about. Happy, uh, it, it means a condition of, or a state of something. It's not what we think of happy, being happy and, and emotional. Uh, again, that makes a big difference when you read this. Uh, it just means you're stable. You, you, you're stable in mind here. And let me say, guys, that's one thing I see a lot today, it, it really concerns me, especially some of the younger people. They, they, they go to these churches and it's, uh, it's nothing but emotions, uh, you know, and they, they feel like it got to be on a high. Now, I, I'll be honest with you, I love when you have them emotional highs, you feel like you can just touch God, but you know, there's also those valleys, and uh, I try to keep up. We're an emotional people. God made us an emotional, but don't let don't let emotions be be your ruler. I thank God. And I tell my guys in the Sunday school class all the time. I thank God that uh, uh, my salvation is much more than emotions. It's so much deeper than that. Uh, if you see me in the morning, some mornings try to get up, you'll find out I. I don't have much of a Christian attitude. I, I'm so ill, I can't stand myself half the time. But uh, we've got to watch the emotions. We've got to watch the emotions. And again, this, this happy is a statement. It's uh, again, well, I'm going to talk, say a little, few more things a little later about this. But uh, you know what Peter was talking about here is is a relationship is being in, in right relationship with Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, Jesus here in 14, uh, Jesus basically said the same thing in Matthew uh, 5, 10. Uh, if you suffer for righteousness' sake. Uh, there again, guys, you, going back to the churches nowadays, it's Send your money, and, and, and it's, it's nothing to do with the spiritual realm. It's an earthly realm. And guys, that's one thing I, 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 I say, get in the Word, get in the Word. I don't get in the Word as much as I do, but I, I, to, I tell my guys a couple weeks ago, I find out when I'm in the Word of God, my, my opinion doesn't matter much anymore. It's, it's the word of God. This is our rule book. This is our standard right here, guys. That takes a lot of the, that takes a lot of the emotions I'm talking to you about. And again, when I'm talking about emotions, guys, it's, uh, there's times talking about worrying. You know, I'm going to probably chase a rabbit, but uh, I got it all lined up. I never follow it. So, but, uh, you know, we're human beings. We have to worry. I mean, there, there's times to worry uh, when, when we're really going through them crises in life. I mean, when it's you're getting the word maybe on the, the uh, C word. It could be many things, relationships. But 
Y'all know like I do, if you got Jesus Christ, yeah, you, in, in, in times it's tough. I mean, it's tough. You don't like being there. I don't like being there. But still, still there's that sweet little voice that says, it's going to be okay. Amen. Hey, we got a better day coming than this. Amen. And, you know, so again, on the, that's, that's what I mean about the emotions, guys. I don't, I don't want us to be robots. We can't be robots. But uh, And then uh, in 15, uh, he says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be always ready to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with the meekness and fear. Again, going back to that, just what I said, we have that hope. We have eternal life, guys, you know. And nothing, this world, we're not going to carry nothing with us. And guys, I hate to burst your bubble. And I know y'all going to throw your pews at me when I say this. It's so dumb. But guys, we're in a sin-cursed world. There's going to be heartache. There's going to be problems, you know. It's, it, again, it's a sin problem. But in 15 here, be always ready to give an answer. Um, I love Roy always says in our Sunday school class, you, you know, if nothing else, guys, and if you look, when Peter really started, uh, when he was doing his ministry there in Acts and start the church, all he would say was what he was witness of. Now, he was with Jesus when he lived, but he just said, you know, what he'd done for him. And guys, if nothing else, we ought to be able to tell people where God's brought us from or what he's done for us. Now, as I stand up here, you know, I, boy, I'm sounding good. But one thing that pricks my heart, and I'm terrible at, is I know I'll be talking to somebody and the door just opens wide open, wide open to, you know, get talking about Jesus or witness to him, and I don't do it. And, you know, so... Uh, but if nothing else, just, just tell them what the Lord's done for you. And another part of this, too, if you, if you can apply this, is if you've got the Lord in you, if the Lord is your Lord and he's your God, it, it'll show. It will show. People will see it. You will be a witness. So... Um, but in 15, always give an answer to every man uh, for your reason of hope that is in you with meekness and fear. On the meekness and fear, <clears throat> that just means, guys, to, the meekness is just to be humble. I, don't, I cannot understand uh, a Christian being prideful because all, all sin is is pride. It's you want to do what you want to do instead of God. And I think I told y'all last time I was here, one thing about Jesus Christ, he was the greatest person ever walked this earth, but he was the most humble. So who am I to think, you know, I'm really something. And this uh, fear here is just a reverence. It's just a reverence of him. It's not a, y'all know about the healthy fear, and y'all heard that before. But uh, also, two guys, I believe this is a way we also have to go before the Lord. We have to go in front of him for uh, humility. Uh, he wants us to come like little children, but I'm telling you, he's not, he's not the big man upstairs. And he, he's, he's God. He's God of this universe. He is my God. He's the Lord of all. And I think, he, I think we see that today. He don't get the respect I think we, and, and I tell you, <clears throat> the day I bow my knee to him, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be very humble, and I'm going to be, everywhere in the Bible I've ever seen where they, the people was in front of God, they fell to their knees. They wasn't no, they wasn't no pride or anything. But I think that's the way we should come before God with the meekness and, and the reverence, the fear here. In 16, having a good conscience that where, whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversion in Christ. <clears throat> conversation, I'm sorry. Conversation in Christ. 
uh, you know, guys, <clears throat> having a good conscience. If you're walking with the Lord, <clears throat> and and you know, and, and you know you're right, and you're walking with Him, let's. And you get darts sh shot at you. Don't worry about it. God's gonna take care of it. it says here there'll be a judgment. <clears throat> I don't know if that judgment means down here or at the end times, but I promise, I promise you one thing. Uh, there's going to be ultimate justice one day. And God's going to take care of... Now, that, that scares me to death in other ways because I know what I'm guilty of if I don't repent of it and ask forgiveness. But, uh, guys, you know... Let's look in the Bible. Where in the world did it talk about these, you know, we're supposed to have a good, soft, easy life? And you find that on the TVs a lot of times now. Nothing but blessings. You don't see it. You show it to me in the Bible. Uh, you, some of the toughest lives was is our heroes of faith. What they had to go through. And, and so... Uh, <clears throat> but you know, if if we if we're getting persecuted for doing the right thing, <clears throat> and guys, we're getting there. This society, excuse me. <clears throat> Thank you, Debbie. I was up here like last time. I thirsted to death, and I didn't know the water was right there. <laughs> I've never been known. I've been about as bright as a bowling ball. So. Uh, sharp as a bowling ball so but uh, uh, you know it, 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 if you're being persecuted and you know you're right with the Lord what does it matter what does it matter and I know uh, uh, Alan that was here uh, speaking Sunday night and he talked about if somebody held a gun to your head now I tell you I hope I don't ever have, have to have that situation. But he's right. We should deny him. You know, they can they can take our body, but they can't touch our soul, guys. They can't touch our soul. Uh, 17. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. I just see this verse, guys. I'd rather suffer for what's right in Jesus Christ than to suffer for evil doing and I can I think you can apply that in my sinful living is the reason I faith you know and so uh, uh, and then in 18 it says for Christ also hath once suffered for sins I just like to say right there guys one time think of think of all the millions and millions of sacrifices that was done at the temple and done at the tabernacle that symbolized what Christ was going to do. And it's over, guys. It was when Christ done it, we ain't got to worry about the temple. We ain't got to worry about the sacrifices. I know the Jews can't wait to rebuild that temple, but it, it doesn't matter. The, the one sacrifice has already been done. And it was the just for the unjust. And boy, I'm so glad of that. You talk about the unjust, you're looking at it. His blood was shed. And uh, I'll have eternal life, and it's because of Jesus Christ. Every day, grace gets sweeter and sweeter, guys. And uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm not no super Christian or anything, but I, I try, I really try, sometime during the day, to thank God for Calvary. Thank, thank the Lord for what He done at Calvary. And uh, so we see here the just for the unjust, <clears throat> that he might bring us to God. That's the only way. Don't want to burst nobody's bubble, but that's the only way through Jesus Christ. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. <clears throat> Guys, he died for us. He gave us eternal life. It's something that we can't earn. It's something that we can't lose. And, you know, but when I say all that, it sounds from the outside, oh, you Christians are so weak. No, it's not. I know what he's done, and I don't have to worry about it anymore. That gives me great confidence. I 
don't want the confidence to become arrogant, what I was just talking about later on. But it's a confidence that, uh, uh, hey, I'm a, I'm a son of the king. I'm going to inherit heaven one day. And so uh, when, <clears throat> when we have problems, and guys, we all, we all are, and uh, we all, all do have problems, Y'all know there's that peace that passes all understanding. I can look around here and see just just about most of you, and I can see what y'all went through, especially the Wednesday night crowd. I, I don't, I, these guys on Sunday is going to have me knocked off, but here, here's, your, here's your group right here. These, these are the guys that, that get, you know, most of the time, they're here on Wednesday nights, and I see y'all going through struggles and hard times, and I see you not miss a lick. And, and guys, y'all will be the first to say, that's not works. It's, be, it's because you appreciate and love Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. Anybody i ever seen, I love to go to an old saint's funeral and see that, you know, he lived a life, it followed the Lord, and... Uh, I, I love, you know, it, it's more of a celebration than a day or a funeral, you know. And, you know, everyone I've ever seen that's made it, and I hope, I hope I never get to the point I'm not thankful for what he's done for me. If you ever lose that, guys, uh, it, it, I've heard Stu preach on that. It, uh, you've got to be thankful. And, um, I've seen and I've seen people come in and start in the church and man, they on they're on fire for about two or three years, and God's God's blessed to have them. Then all of a sudden they fall off the side of the earth and you can't find them. The ministries I see at last and the individuals, they love the Lord. They're appreciative of what He's done. So that's about all I got. Just. Uh, the main thing is, guys, we've got, to keep, we've got to keep focused and keep the Lord number one in our hearts and stay focused on Him. So I'm going to close this in a quick prayer. Hope you guys have a good week and uh, hope to see you Sunday, the Lord willing. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for these people, uh, my true brothers and sisters in Christ, Father. I thank you for this church and what it means to me. And Father, I just thank you for letting me come here and be a small part of it, Father. Again, Father, I just lift up all the prayer requests and all the unspoken that are here, Father, and all the sicknesses and so forth. We just give them to you. And Father, I just pray it's, uh, I try to, try to speak a few words that we, we just stay focused on you, Lord, because we We've won, we've won the war. We, we just got to get through the battles. Again, Father, I thank you for these people. Uh, and I thank you and pray that you will watch over and take care of us and give us a good night. But most of all, Father, I thank you for Calvary. In your name I pray, in Jesus Christ, amen.